Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is home for Christmas. This is one of my own afghans and this is an intermediate level and we're gonna be applying surface overlay. So when I came up with this idea, Daniel and I were discussing about how do we implement a wreath on top of an afghan. So we, I got thinking to myself that I can apply surface overlay with this. So what you're seeing here is the wreath that's sitting there is actually uh, done after the whole motif is done. So after the octagon is done, then you go and apply the surface overlay, which is the leaves of the wreath. So today we're gonna be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook. There's a total of five colors. We have the Karen Simply Soft. We chose Karen Simply Soft because it has a drape to it that is really quite beautiful. It also has luster and I think that you're gonna love it too. I'm in my sample today, I'm going to be using a slightly different color palette. I don't like to doing things twice. So I decided to change the colors just to make it a little bit more interesting for myself. So instead of green leaves here, I actually have red and it kind of reminds me a little bit of poinsettias but I use that really quite loosely. So without further ado, let's go into this pattern and let's see what we're gonna get ourselves into today. So the pattern is a total of seven pages. No, there's not seven pages of writing. There's actually seven pages of information for you. So when we go through the front here, you'll see that this is what the motif looks like before the surface overlay of the uh, crocodile stitch or the scale stitch is applied. And then once you apply that, then you end up getting the leaves that just like you see here. So it's got nice some nice photographs of what we're gonna be getting ourselves involved with and we're also gonna be doing a border at the end of this as well as a triangle motif and we also have a square motif. So here's what we created for you. Also gave you some stitch counts uh, in order to make it uh, easier for you and you can see that there's the number of square motifs, octagons and also triangles that are used in order to make it a uh, solid um, um, a seam or a solid edge. So I left it off so that you just have like a nice chamfered edge when you're going to do this. Here's some photography. So this is what it looks like. So there's a total of uh, 16 of these octagon motifs that are applied together and you can see. So if you wanna make it bigger, just go ahead and go and do so. You will find that it will work out. And then we also have my fun page here of the diagrams that were done. And so we're going to do the octagon first. We're going to apply the surface overlay. So this is how it's done. And then we're gonna do a square and then um, the triangle here. And then what we're going to do then is take our sample which I have created here and I'll show you how it's all um, whip stitched together and we'll also go through the, the border with you today. So it's a big one today and without further ado let's uh, get into this further. So you can see it's a nice generous size uh, project. So I like making my motifs big because then I can make far less of them. So it just doesn't matter more time commitment to one motif but then there's less to do. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna create this whole motif and then this uh, red that you see here is applied after that is done. So it's going to look like if you look at from the back it's going to look nice and flat and then I'll show you how this um, these um, scale stitch is going to work. It actually works out beautifully. Also makes it look random but it's actually strategic too and you'll see that happening as well. So we're going to then continue and make this whole thing. Um, we did a little bit of popcorn stitches here just to give it a bit of extra oomph. Um, I used yellow in this just kind of symbolizing gold um, for my wreath and etc. And again you can change the colors that match for you. So later on in this tutorial we'll have more of the different motifs that we're going to do but for now we're gonna get started here. So a five millimeter size H crochet hook and let's begin. And I'm gonna be using Karen Simply Soft today. So here's the crochet diagram that we're gonna get ourselves started. It's an eight sided octagon uh, option for you. Now because it doesn't show you the whole octagon, it's just a matter of once you understand how to do one side, the other sides are like mirrors. So there's eight mirrors essentially. So there's one, one and then there's there's uh, the mirror image. So what they wanna focus on here is that you wanna focus on where the um, slip stitching is uh, when you go to finish around. So once you do the first one here, you'll see how it works out and etc. So we're gonna start off in the very uh, center here and just there's one grayed out here that's just a uh, because it just covers uh, with the numbers so they do that when information is covering each other just like you see. So we're gonna get started right in the center and what I have here is that chain three does not count as a stitch here and so I did that so that you have the nice center that's completely filled out. So we're going to begin to do that next. So let's actually start the crocheting now. <laughs> so let's begin and create a slip knot. This is an intermediate level but the tutorial has been provided so those that are ambitious can actually try and do this one as well. So we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And in the third chain away, I want you to apply 16 double crochets. So going right into the third chain away, do 16. So just one and two and meet me back here when you have 16 done. 
Once you have 16 double crochets you are going to slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet not the chain three. So just going there and then that will fill in nicely. I'm only gonna show you one time in order to just get rid of your tail ends. I would do it as you go. I'm an assembly line crocheter so what I would do there's a total of 16 of these octagons. I would do the other um, uh, 15 of these right now and then you don't have to keep referring back to the pattern. So if you just do all 15, all 16 of these now then when you do the next one you're going to do all of the next round then for all of the um, 16 and etc. So um, that's a way to really speeding up the process for these kind of ideas. Let me show you how to weave in the ends. Um, I'd recommend you do it as you go. It's just easier than worrying about it at the end. And just throw the yarn tail through the tapestry needle. Turn it over to the back side of the project and just weave it in. And if you go in and out three times and honestly it doesn't take that long. It's just cause I'm in tutorial format that it, it seems like it does. But just going back three times, back and forth three times on the back side of the motif you can really hide things in beautifully at that point. And then you can just trim it safely down and get rid of any tail ends that you have. So this would be how you would get rid of that. So I would do all of your um, 16 now of this and then move on to round number two. I'm not gonna really mention that for the rest of the tutorial but that's the way I would do it if I were you and you were me. So moving on to the next color. So moving on to round number two we're going to just join on the first double crochet and chain four. So one, two, three, four. So that is one double crochet and a chain one space. You are then going to apply a popcorn into the next stitch chain one. Double crochet in the next stitch, chain one. Popcorn in the next stitch, chain one. Do you see the commonality? And when we come all the way around we're gonna chain one and then join it to the third chain up when we come, come back like so. So let's bring on our next color and my, in my case it's Robin, um, Robin's Egg Blue. So let's begin. I have a slip knot already created and I'm gonna go into the top of the first double crochet. And then what I want to do is that I wanna chain a total of four. So one, two, three, and four. So that is double crochet and a chain one space. And the next one I wanna do popcorn. So I decided in the popcorns to only make it three or uh, four double crochets. So in the next one I need you to do four double crochets into the same stitch. And then once you have your four in, this is how you do a popcorn, you're gonna release it off the hook and come into the first one of the grouping of four and through the top of the stitch grab the loop and pull it through and then I need you to chain one to move on to the next stitch. So let's double crochet in the next one, chain one and then popcorn to, to the next stitch. So there's a total of four double crochets that make that up. That'll be consistent in this pattern whenever we hit it. And then release it and go to the first one of the grouping of four, loop it through, chain one and then move on to your next one, double crochet in the next. So please do that all the way around. You will notice that there will be eight popcorns jumping out at you at the end of this round. So please do that and make sure you chain one in between each of these stitches. When you get all the way around you're gonna have your last popcorn. Don't forget to chain one first and then join it to the third chain up on the beginning chain four. Like so. So get rid of this yarn now and I'll see you back and we'll start round, round number three. So in round number three we're going to start on the first chain three that you see. Okay so there is the four right where we finished off. So chain one and single crochet. You could also do a standing single crochet if you wanna do it like that. I'll probably do that too. So in the chain one spaces you'll each apply two single crochets and you're going to skip over the popcorn. So just ignore the popcorn stitches but on the tops of the double crochets you're going to apply one single crochet into those. Okay does that make sense? So just two into the chain one spaces, ignore the popcorn stitch and just go in there. Popcorn stitches are not always easy to identify so I decided to skip those in this process just to make it easier for you. Let's move on to round number three. Okay so this is where I make your life complicated. I got white yarn and, and a white background so I'll do my best. So we're just going to join it to where you did the fastening off. It's almost hard for me to tell where that is. I'm just gonna try to peek. It's right here. So in the top of the first chain three, that, okay that's where I'm going to join. So if you put it on the, your hook first and then pull it through but don't pull it through the first loop. If you then pull through the two that's a standing single crochet. So therefore you don't have to join it chain one and single crochet in there. So just space now 
between the popcorn and the double crochet stitch. In this case it's chain three. So just put in two um, single crochets and then just skip over the popcorn and just go in the next chain one space and apply two single crochets and then one into the double crochet and then going into the next space two and then jump over the next popcorn and then etc. So just ignore the popcorn stitches and you'll see that it will work out really quite beautifully. So this is round number three. Once you get all the way back around just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet. Now I'm gonna keep this color going on and we're gonna move on to round number four next. So I'm not gonna go back to the diagram right now because it's so easy. So what you're going to do is you're just gonna chain three and then essentially every stitch gets a double crochet. That's it. Nice and easy for round number four. So just one double crochet in each of the single crochet stitches below and I'll meet you at the end of round number four and then we'll go from that point. I'm going to show you a cheating technique. So you see this right here. That's part of the first stitch but it always looks like it's not belonging there. So on the last stitch what you can just do is that you can just start the double crochet as normal and then pull through two but don't finish that stitch. See this gapping space that is created? If you yarn over and going into that space and yarn over pull through, pull through two, you essentially have three loops on the hook. You can pull through all three loops and then that still keeps it as one stitch but it fills in the gap space. So when you go to join it to the first stitch here it looks like it belongs together and it's a lot more tighter. Okay, so it's something that you can get away with. So get rid of this yarn and then we're gonna make some decisions on this next part and let's begin to do that next. So as we move on to round number five, you're going to notice that there's a green underlay of this. So if you turn it over you see it. So what I'm recommending to you like in order to have kind of like the three dimensional look I decided to keep the motif a different color than the surface overlay. Again your decision but that's what the pattern is calling for. So what I would recommend to you rounds number five through eight. So five, six, seven and eight the next four rounds all to be the same color and that will rest in behind the surface overlay. So if I don't want this green at all I could have made it red and then this red as well and therefore it will be completely red your call. Um, the pattern doesn't suggest that but that's something that you can do. So you will need extra yarn if you're gonna uh, do that uh, to keep it all a solid color. I thought it'd just be fun to keep it a different color and have little colors of green kind of popping through just to kind of give it three dimensional look. So let's go back to the pattern now because now we're gonna start establishing from the circle to an octagon. So rounds number five, six, seven and eight should be the same color according to my uh, uh, design your call. So in round number five now we're gonna start translating this in order to get it to go to an octagon. So right now we've been working as a circle. So we're gonna join to the top of the chain three and we're going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet in and then the next four in a row will each be a single crochet and on the fifth one there will be a single crochet, chain one, single crochet and this is going to start establishing the corners. So how many corners will you have? you have a total of eight because it's an octagon. So then you'll start seeing that develop. So if you look at it from this perspective, just turn it like this, you can see the octagon. So they did it this way just for space analysis here on the pattern. So let's uh, begin to do round number five and let's start creating the octagon shape. So let's begin round number five. You're gonna come up to the top of the chain three and join it. So you can do a uh, standing single crochet if you want to. So just uh, put it onto the hook first and then pull it through. And if you don't pull this through the first loop you have two loops just pull through those two and that's a standing single crochet. So now you're gonna chain one and in the same one single crochet one more time. So go right up over top of that straggler to hide it in. So the next four in a row will each be one single crochet. So one, two, three and four and now a new corner. So a new corner so it's single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then go again. So there's four in a row. So one, two, three and four and then a new corner. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Please do that all the way around. This is round number five. So I'm coming all the way around and the last four in a row are each a single crochet and then you're just going to join it to the first single crochet that you started with. I want you just to take a look at it. Make sure that you can see eight sides to this. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Before you continue, I want to show you a little technique and I would recommend that you get a spare piece of yarn or stitch markers, whatever you wanna do. A spare piece of yarn I can always find. And I need you to make a total of eight of these single crochet, or of these strands of just using a different color. So one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the reason why I'm having you do these eight now is that I found with myself I tend to lose count. So if I put these on the corners now I can see where the corners are because the corners really blend because of the way that the surface overlay is working. So let's just put those aside and we're gonna be implementing those in the next round, round number six. So as we progress into round number six, we're going to just start up in the chain one space. So we're gonna slip stitch over to the chain one space, chain up total four. So that's one double crochet, chain one. Then you're going to sing, double crochet into the same chain one space. I'm going to apply a stitch marker here, one of those red ones that I just did so that I can see it later. You're gonna skip one and then you're just gonna apply a, a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And in this case you're going to skip two single crochets and go to the third one over and double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then immediately just go into the next chain one space and do this corner and apply your stitch marker when you're finished that. So it's, so you can see when you go all the way around here it'll look like it'll blend and that's why I'm telling you to do those um, stitch markers so that you can identify which one of these is the actual corner because you can lose count really quite easily. So let's begin to do round number six. So round number six we're gonna start, so we're gonna just um, slip stitch over to the chain one space and begin. So I want you to just chain four. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet and the fourth is a chain one space and I want you to double crochet into the same one. And before you continue I want you to put in a stitch marker. So just pull up a loop and just pull a stitch marker there so you can see it in the future. I found myself some, sometimes second guessing myself but because I'm the designer I can see and replay, uh, find my work easier because I understand the pattern really in a lot of detail. For you it may not be so obvious. So skipping now the first stitch and going to the second over I want you to apply a V stitch. So this is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now in this case we're gonna skip two and then just double crochet in the next one after that and sing, uh, chain one and double crochet so a V stitch there as well. If you're off at all you can kind of fake this round if you have to too. Now you're gonna come into the next, so each side has two of those so then you're gonna come into the next corner. So in the chain one space in the corner you're going to single cro uh, double crochet, chain one and, and double crochet into the same one and I'm going to apply a stitch marker there too. So that's my next corner. So I should have a total of eight of these corners. I'm just gonna show you one more side and then I'll leave the rest for you. So skipping the next one away, one, and going to the second one over, I want you to do a V-stitch. Okay, skipping now two in a row and going to the third one over, do a V-stitch. And now just go right to the corner. So you just uh, chain one space and apply another uh, stitch marker there to uh, show you the corner later in the future. So do that all the way around and use those stitch markers to your advantage. It'll be really quite helpful for you and uh, we'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number I believe six. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just gonna fill in this last space here, this last side and then I'm just going to slip stitch it to the third chain up. And now all my sides are now marked, all my corners so that you can see with the stitch markers it's kind of ugly right at this moment but it will greatly help you. So before I move on I'm just going to slip stitch to the chain one space which is the corner and every time I'm now gonna move a corner I'm gonna move those up at least until I get past this part of the surface overlay area and let's go back to uh, the diagram for round number seven. So going back to the diagram we've already slip stitched to the chain one space so you're gonna chain four and double crochet and move in your corner stitch marker when you go to do that. In the next space between 
these V stitches you're gonna apply another V stitch and then in between this space here another V stitch and then in between here. So there will be a total of three V stitches in a row and then you will do a V stitch right in the corner so it matches and move up that stitch marker again. So when we go to do that. So what we're doing here in the next uh, two rounds is that we're applying V stitches in between uh, the V stitch, uh, v stitch place. The reason why I did that is that you will notice that these um, scales will not line up with each other which makes it look random which is more authentic to a wreath I suppose and I had to keep it on the edges in order to keep the balance. So let's begin round number seven. So I've already slip stitched in the space so you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three that's your first double crochet and the fourth is a chain one space and you're going to double crochet into that same space and what I'm recommending is that you move your stitch marker up at the same time so you can find it again in the future. Now we're gonna move up, uh, sorry we're gonna move on. So in between the next, so this is a V stitch, so there's a V stitch. So in the space between you're gonna apply a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then skip and go into the next space between the two V stitches and apply a V stitch. And then finally between the corner V stitch and the next one, and the next one that you, you're about to run into right in the space between. Or make sure you chain one in between uh, when you go to do that. It keeps that space open. And then once you have that done, so you have three V stitches that are now between this corner and this corner. So in this corner here you are going to apply the V stitch. You see how it can all look like it's blending? And then what I would do, recommend, move that stitch marker up and follow it so that you can see it again in the future. So let's do one more side. So there's the corner. So in the space between that corner and the next V stitch just apply another V stitch. Then look for the V stitch here and go in the space in between. Okay, here's the next V stitch. Go in between the space and the corner one. So you see three V stitches that have been applied after this last corner and then go into the corner of space and apply a V stitch there and move up your stitch marker. So please do that all the way around. This is round number seven and I'll see you at the end of this round. So when I come all the way back around I'm just filling in the spaces um, between the V stitches like I have been. All my stitch markers have been moved up for my own sanity and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the third chain up of the beginning chain four. So that's kind of what it looks like now. Let's go back to the diagram. Let's go into round number eight. So we begin round number eight. We're going to slip stitch to the next space, the corner space and then chain four again and double crochet in here and again working in the spaces between the V stitches and again V stitching in the corner. So this time there will be four V stitches that will be between the corners uh, and that's what we're gonna do for round number eight. So round number eight just slip stitch to the next chain one space which is the corner and chain four. So the three there is double crochet, chain one is the chain one space and etc. and move the stitch marker up. You'll wanna move it just one more time in order to get this to work. Um, you'll find that it's a lot easier for yourself in the next round if you can see it. So then working in the spaces between the corners and the V stitches. Okay, and then just jump in between the next space between. And the next space in between. See now that I marked it with the stitch marker I can easily tell where things are. Um, I couldn't do that when I was first designing this because I wasn't marking the edges because I'm not always the sharpest tool in the shed. Okay and there is my four. So here's the corner and there's the four and then here's the new corner here. So V stitch there and then move up the stitch marker one last time and then you can get rid of your stitch markers for here and then you can move on. So if I was doing this in the assembly method I would be doing all of this um, rounds five through eight with the one color before moving on to the next um, motif. It's just easier to remember. So just keep using the spaces in between the V stitches and continue to go all the way around. This is round number eight.
So I'm finishing up round number eight, the last uh, V-stitch is in and I'm just gonna join it to the third chain up of the beginning chain four. I'm gonna get rid of this yarn now and I'm just going to just weave that off, uh, weave it off nicely and then we're gonna begin then round number nine. We're gonna use a new color for that. So let's begin to do that next. So we begin round number nine. We're going to start off with a new color. In my case it'll be blue and I'm going to go to the chain one space in the corner. Chain four counts as a double crochet in chain one and double crochet in the same one. So we're gonna continue these V-stitch here at least in the corners. We're then gonna go in the actual V-stitch itself this time and apply three double crochets into each of those and then just jump to the corner of a, a V-stitch into the corner. Once you're passing these you can pull the stitch markers out because you'll be able to see it very clearly where your corners are and then continue on with your journey. So let's continue round number nine. Let's begin in a corner. You can see which one is marked. See it'd be kinda hard to tell if you didn't obviously see it which one was the corner. That's why I had you mark them. So just pick a corner. Any corner is good. And then just slip stitch and then chain four. So one, two, three, four. So that's a double crochet and chain one and then double crochet in the same one. And you can remove your stitch marker now out. Now coming to the next uh, V stitch go right in between the V's. Okay so, so don't, not in between the actual V stitches but inside the V itself and apply three double crochets. So I thought I'd give ourselves a mental break uh, for this round to being able to find it nicely and also grow it consistently. So in between the next uh, in the next V stitch you're gonna apply three so there's a total of four V or uh, four of these stitches or four of these groups of, of three between the corners. Okay and my corner is next. I can see it. So in the corner one here I'm just going to apply a double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then move on. So now that that's marked take it out and then just going into the next V stitch itself uh, three double crochets and etc. So please do this now all the way around for round number uh, nine and uh, you'll see that the corners will still be maintaining themselves and you'll see it quite clearly this time around. Let's begin, let's continue this and I'll see you at the end of round number nine. So when I'm coming all the way back around after I get my last side done just join it to the top of the chain three and be done with this color. And I'm gonna show you something on the sample that I decided to do and it's obvious in the sample you just may not be so obvious to it at this moment because I haven't showed you yet. So let me uh, get rid of this color and then I'll see you and then we'll continue on with round number 10, 11 and 12. When we move on to round number 10 I decided to make it white here and then round number 12 is also white which I then made the popcorns look like it jumps out. So I kind of like framed this by keeping the same colors on rounds number 10 and 12 and making 11 something new. So that's what I'm looking to do and let's begin round number uh, 10 and I need to show you something on the diagram next. As we now move on to round number 10 we're going to start up in a, a corner space and chain one and uh, single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the same one. We're going to apply one single crochet in each stitch with the exception of the stitch in the middle. So see how there's four of these groups of three double crochet? The middle one on each side becomes only one stitch so it's a two together. I have to do that mathematically in order for this to work out. It, I had to eliminate a stitch and this is where I decided to do it right here. So you're just gonna apply one single crochet in each of the remaining and then the corner again is a single crochet, chain one single crochet and again one single crochet in each except for the ones that are right in the middle and that's the two together and etc. So we're, let's begin round number 10 to see how you do. Okay so let's begin round number 10. So I'm just gonna come into the uh, V-stitch of a corner. It's easy to tell which ones are they are. If not just keep it marked with a stitch marker. Now I tell you after you pulled it out right. So a single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. So essentially I'm looking for the middle one. So see how there's four? I'm looking for the two middle ones to be together as one. So I could either count it but I'm not going to because I don't need to because I can physically see it with my eyes when I get there. But if you like to count it the diagram is available for you. So here is the, the middle one. So these two become together. So in, pull through, go into the next stitch, pull through and then pull through all three. 
and that's a two together. And then I continue to single crochet then until I get to the next corner. So it's just one single crochet in each stitch. So here's a corner. So ready, the corner is single crochet, chain one, one single crochet, and then rotate this a little bit so it's easier. So one single crochet in each of the stitches with the exception of the two middle ones. Okay, which is next. Okay, do you see it? So there's the grouping of four. So the two middle ones become together and etc. So please do this all the way around. This is round number uh, 10. Coming all the way around, uh, I'm just going to join it to the first single crochet that we started with and be done. So I'm gonna get rid of this color and then we'll see you back and let's do round number 11 and we're gonna be going popcorns again and I'll show you some trips there too or tips, <laughs> tricks, tips. In round number 11 we're going to start off in the corner again, chain three and um, chain an extra one so there's four and then double crochet in the same one and we're gonna chain one. So then we're going to skip one and popcorn in the next chain one, skip one, popcorn in the next. You want a total of seven of these popcorns. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you're losing count at any point, just ensure that you can see that um, seven, uh, seven popcorns are done with these chain one spaces and it will bring you back. So I always try to design stuff so that there's an off ramp or an on ramp. So just in case you're losing count somewhere, it's ways to be able to cheat the system if you have to. Where then when you get to the corner, you're gonna chain one, skip the last one and then just double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next and then start again. Chain one, skip one and popcorn. Let's begin round number 11. So let's begin in a chain one space of a corner and start in and chain a total of four. So one, two, three, four. That's your chain or that's your double crochet and chain one space and then double crochet in the same one. So skipping the next one which is kind of always hard to tell but it's actually right here. It looks like it's part of a corner but it's not and so you're going to skip that one and come immediately into the next one. So if you look at the popcorn you'll notice and the pattern you'll notice that the first popcorn is appearing over top of this one here. And that's where people can go wrong. So you're gonna apply four double crochets into the same stitch in order to do that. Again, I'm looking for seven popcorns to appear. So come in the top of the first, the fourth, the fourth one, uh, the fourth one away, chain one to move on, and then skip the next one and popcorn into the next. So one, two, three, and four. And drop, go to the fourth one back chain one and then move on to the next one. So I'll see you at the first corner and we'll make sure you're doing it right and then we'll just continue then all the way around for round number 11. So I'm finishing up my seventh popcorn. My counts are right and chain one and then I'm just gonna come into the chain one space of the corner and apply a double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then start again. So if you're not sure just look where that blue is and follow that straight up that it's the first stitch of the first popcorn and then you're going to apply your popcorn seven in a row. Make sure you got your chain one spaces that separate them and etc. And this is round number 11. I'll see at the end of this round. It takes a little bit longer to get around because you are applying popcorns but the look is phenomenal. So continue this journey as we move on, uh, continue with round number 11. So I'm coming all the way around. I'm just finishing my last popcorn of the, the round and then just chain one. And then I just have to slip stitch to the third chain up to finish off this round and I'm gonna get rid of this color. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the white just so I can frame it and then just make sure that you have um, seven popcorns in each side and then it, things will work out pretty good for you. So let's uh, begin round number 12 next. As we begin round number 12 we're going to start off in the corner on uh, uh, chain one, single crochet in the same one, chain one, single crochet in the same one. So each one of these double crochets that you see 
here and the chain one spaces each get a popcorn. So the popcorns are somewhat hard, uh, are hard to identify. So just make sure that once you identify where you think it is, make sure that the single crochet goes into each one of the areas that you think it is and then it should work out for you. So again each single crochet, sorry each chain one space and each stitch here will get a single crochet and then when you get to the next corner it's single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So let's begin round number 12. We just have one more round to go after this. So let's begin round number 12. We're gonna start off in the corner. So go right to a corner space and you can do a standing a single crochet. So just going in, pulling it through and you got two loops. Pull through, chain one and single crochet in the same one. So it's a kind of like a single crochet V stitch in the corners. So each one of these double crochets here will get a single crochet and then in the space between the stitches, so between the, before the next popcorn is gonna be a single crochet. So what you wanna identify is where do you think it is. So I'm just gonna apply the one single crochet here and then going into the space in between and then in the same area of the next one and the space in between. Okay, so that's what all we're gonna do here. Sometimes it's hard to identify those popcorns but if you're consistent then it will look right and if you do it the same with each one of the motifs then it'll be perfect. So before you get to the next corner, just go into the space first, then into the double crochet that belongs in the corner and then go to the corner. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So you're starting another side. So start in the double crochet, go in the space in between and then popcorn, space in between and popcorn. Please do that all the way around. This is round number 12. So I'm just finishing up this round and just coming all the way and then I'm just gonna slip stitch and then I'm gonna get rid of this color. And we're gonna move back to the blue for the final round and uh, looks pretty good so far. So let's go back to the diagram in just a moment and then we'll continue on for round number 13, lucky 13 in the final round of this motif. So this is all she wrote. One more round we're gonna come and we're gonna start off in the chain one space of a corner and apply four. So it's one double crochet chain one and it's just gonna be one double crochet into each of the stitches right up until the next corner. Corner is one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet and etc. So last round nice and simple just double crochets and that will help it to bring it back in balance for this. So let's bring back the blue and let's do the final round. Last round, here we go. We're gonna go right into a chain one space of a corner and you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three, four and double crochet in the same one. Now they're gonna just go make sure that you get that first one that is in the corner. See it? And just make sure you get all the stitches that you need and it's one double crochet in each corner. So one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet which is a V stitch and I want you to do that all the way around then for the final round number 13. Weave in the ends um, and I want you to do all your motifs first before you moving on to the surface overlay which is the wreath that we'll apply in the next portion of today's tutorial. So let's continue that and I'll see you at the end of this round. Okay now that I'm all the way back around I'm just going to slip stitch to the chain three, the third chain up and then that's it for this. So what we need to do is that you need to get all your motifs done to this level and then what I would recommend is doing all your surface overlay second when all the motifs are done. If you'd like to do the first one of course just to see what it will look like that's up to you too. So what we're going to do then is we're, we're gonna move on in this tutorial and I'm gonna show you the surface overlay next and it's actually really easy. Now when I was designing it just for full transparency I wasn't sure it was gonna work. It was just a fluke on the numbers. It just happened to work out which is awesome. <laughs> um, some things just are a miracle and that's just one of them. So it should be laying relatively flat for you here as that you can see and what we're going to do is that we're gonna start our surface overlay and we're gonna start on the outside. So you got three rings of this green which is the, the V stitches. You're gonna start with the outside one first and then do the next and then next and the reason for that when you look at it see how it overlays and it lays down on top of the stitches. If you start here this here these points will be in the way so you won't be able to see it. So you wanna start on the furthest one out and then the next one and then the next one and you'll see how they're kind of aligning with each other once in a while and then sometimes they're going off alignment. That's just completely random but it's really kind of not and I'll be explaining that more in a bit. So let's move on to the surface overlay. So let's begin the surface overlay. So it is a wreath that is sitting on top of this that is part of it and so when you look at the original sample 
here you'll see that the leaves are on top and you can see that it's wrapping around the posts that are on the back side. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to transition this into having leaves. So I'm gonna take you to the diagram first and I explain it to you because once you understand this concept you can do all three rounds the same way. You will need to fasten off at the end of each round and restart and you will need to tuck in your ends in order to do so. So that's one of those things. So let's go back to the diagram now and let's show you what you're up to. So the diagram has been done so that it appears like this. Okay, so it's right, it's completely right. Now when I'm going to do something like this, I would recommend to you that you turn and you think about it from a different perspective. In this kind of element, you're not going to just um, apply it like you see it here. You're going to apply it as uh, like it's upside down. And how I explain that is that I want you to look at it from this perspective and what we're going to do, just ignore where you started and what we need to do is that we need to build out on the posts. So right on the start of the post we're gonna build out and then work our way down and then chain one and then work our way up. So we're skipping every other uh, V stitch that you see. Okay, so when you look at it from this there's a V stitch and there's a V stitch but the V stitch has been covered over so we're skipping every other one when we go to do this. So essentially what I'm saying to you is that I'm not going to start up here and go this way. What I'm going to do is that I'm gonna start here and go this way. Okay, so I'm gonna start. So what I want to do is that I wanna build myself down the post and then do the chain one and then build my way back up the post. So what we have to consider is that we have to consider where we're starting. So I'm going to start the first time in a corner and because I go every other one, I'm going to finish the one, um, two, V stitches away. So just to skip this one and I'll finish there and then I'll attach it. The next time I go I am not going to start off in the corner. I'm just gonna move over by one and then go all the way around and the next one I will start off in the corner. Because these stitches are working together you're going to notice that it's going to appear random but in actual fact it's not random at all. You're just skipping every other V stitch when you go to do this. So it just works out to be looking random. So I'm going to take my time. I'm gonna show you how to get started but for now get your motif ready. Grab your yarn and let's begin to try this. As I've already stated before you want to start off on the the outside ring first of the V stitch. Then the next round will be inside and then the final one will be inside. And remember what I said is that when you go to create these leaves it kind of buries over what is already there. So if you start in this one here it's gonna be harder to access these stitches because these leaves will be in your way. So because you're gonna do it you're going to notice that it will have a nice ring and then you'll be able to see the next layer of stitches. So even though it's covering over now it's not as you're going and you'll see that in just a few moments. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot and I want you to really think about how you're gonna get yourself started. So I'm just gonna position it like this so I can see a corner and I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit closer. So just stand by. Okay, so here you got a front row seat. So I'm looking for the corner and I'm looking for the V stitch and I'm looking for, so we're gonna play within the V stitch. So I'm gonna use this V stitch. I'm going to skip this one and I'm gonna use this V stitch and we're going every other one. So starting in the first one I want you to go around the post Okay, stay towards the middle area and it will make sense in just a moment and just attach and chain three. This will count as a first double crochet. Now working down the post towards the outside of the motif I want you to put four more double crochets. So with the chaining of three I just did plus the four that gives you a total number of five which is what we want. Make sure you actually finish the stitch. <laughs> and once you have a total number of five, so in this case it's three, chain three and then four double crochets, I need you to chain one. Now I'm going to shift the project like this and I'm gonna come to the other side of that same V stitch starting at the this side on the outside and work my way back towards the center of the motif. This is how you do the crocodile or scale stitching and I'm just gonna work my way up. So essentially I'm working down one post and I'm working up the other. So I'm working five double crochets up this next post that is part of the same V stitch. So the outside here should be facing the outside of the motif. Okay, so I'm going to skip the next, let me just finish that stitch. I'm going to skip the next V stitch that you have and go to the second one over 
and start on the upper one that is closest to the inside and work my way down five double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then chain one, just shift it so it's easier to get to and go up the other side of that same V stitch. So starting on the outside of the part of the motif and work your way up towards the center of the motif and you're doing five up there. And all you're doing is you're doing this all the way around and then when you get to the end of the round we fasten off and then restart again and we go around again. The nice thing about it is that the first time around takes a while but when you get to the other rings it, it's smaller. It's a smaller diameter so it goes faster and then even faster as you're doing the other one. So skipping the next set of V stitches and just reach over starting on the center side of the motif and work your way down. So it's kind of hard terminology because when you think up and down you're thinking of the upper side of a project but in this case because you're working on the base and swinging around it's kind of opposite. So chain up one, shift it and come in the other V stitch and go up that next post. So hopefully you understand. So you're just gonna skip the next V stitch and go on. So what I'll do is I'll meet you at the end of this revolution. We'll get you started in another one and then I'm gonna leave you the final revolution to do on your own and then we'll meet back up there and move on with the rest of the motifs. So skipping the next one and just shifting over and doing that. So please do that all the way around. So I'm just finishing up the final scale and so there should be if your counts are right one V stitch that's left in between because you have to skip every other one, right? So what you need to do at the end of this, unfortunately my friends, you're gonna need a tapestry needle. So I want you to slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three and then that will pull it over and look like it's part of it. And then what I'm gonna recommend to you at this point is just to trim this yarn and pull through. Now if you weave it in right now as is it's going to fall out on you. So what I do is put your hook on the back side and pull it through the stitch work in the back side. Pull that yarn through and I want you to turn it over. So just for transparency I did this all at the same time. So I pulled all my yarn ends to the back side and then at the end of the motif I just went at the end of when I was done I just took the motif strands and then I just wove them in. So all I just wanna do is secure it on the back side through some stitch work. So don't you dare go through the front side of this. Just go back once and twice and three times. And you'll wanna do that each and every time. Okay, that's the only way to get rid of it so that it won't fall out on you. And therefore you have the beautiful ring here. So do you see what I'm saying about starting on the outside ring? The next one is interior but you can see all of the stitch work easily because the the hangover is towards the outside. So to start the next one it there's still an even number here so you can do every other one. So we started off on a corner. So what I'm recommending is start another one in. So not in the corner just start at the next one and go every other one once you start that. Again like before just put on a slip knot and then chain three. So one, two, three and down that same post so towards the outside of the motif towards you. See how I'm coming up over those loose ends? It, I can get rid of that one without having to weave it in. So that was, two, that was considered uh, chain three plus the two so it's three so far, four and five and now I can just safely just trim that loose end out that now then I can, don't have to worry about it later. Then chain one and then flip the project so it's, I can access it and come down the other side of that same V stitch and then just skip every other V stitch going around. Okay, so that's all you need to do. I showed you how to end around. So do that and what I'm expecting you to do before you move on is that I want you to do this one more time 
and in the next one I would start off in the corner v-stitch that you'll find and go all the, every other one all the way around. So that's what um, I need you to do and when we come back I'll have that done and we'll continue on. You'll notice that these will get faster and faster because um, it's closer to the center. There's less v-stitches to worry about. So um, if you felt the first round is, is a while, it takes a while to get used to it but once you start blazing your way through these it gets a lot easier for sure. And uh, we'll see you at the end of the section here and then we're gonna move on in the pattern and move on to the square. So I'll see you and do a quick review before we get there and I'll see you in just a moment. So here's the motif completely finished and when I turn it over you can see it. I've got rid of all my loose ends. I wanna make sure I get that all done and tucked away. It's just easier than assembling this and having all those loose ends everywhere. So let's uh, take a look at the other project that I'm working on. So I did this one as my last one. So I did my homework in advance and getting all these other motifs done. And what you can see here is that I'm gonna add it in. So you can see it's gonna puzzle together. So we still have the square and the triangle to do. To understand the triangle I think you should do the square first because essentially the triangle is half of the square and we'll be getting to that in just a little bit. So we're gonna move on now to the square. There is a diagram available for that. Essentially it's kind of this but made as a square but thankfully we don't have any more of those uh, scale stitches so I've given you a bit of a break in that, that element. Honestly I couldn't handle any more but anyway. <laughs> So that's kind of the honest to God truth. So everything is gonna puzzle together and uh, it's just gonna be fun and fabulous I suppose. So let's uh, without further ado let's go to the diagram here of the square and let's figure out what we're gonna get ourselves into next. So let's look at this bad boy here and this is a diagram again and this is now for the square. Now the difference between the octagon and the square is the number of sides. Obviously there's only four sides versus eight. So there's only gonna be 12 double crochets going around. So you'll see that the ones grayed out that's because the number one's in front of it here. So they do that just for easy reading. So we wanna kinda continue with the same kind of color palette. I think uh, I did it in a way that I could maximize the amount of yarn without having a lot of waste. So that's how I figured it out. So I did all my squares to be the same coloring and that's up to you if you would like to do that. So we're gonna start off in a circle and then eventually convert ourselves to a square nice and easily and then finish off just like so. So there's no, uh, other than the main start here, popcorns, there's a total of six of them. Um, there's really not a lot to these and then the triangle is even easier and we have a triangle version as well which is essentially half of this but I will show you how that's done as well because there is a slight trick to that as well. So let's uh, get started. Okay, let's grab our five millimeter size uh, H crochet hook. It's the same size hook. I'm not even sure why I said it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three. Now I want you to put 12 double crochets in the third chain from the hook. So the very starting chain. So you're gonna go one ringy dingy, two, and see me here once you get 12 done. So just put me on pause now. So make sure you have your 12 double crochets and then slip stitch to the first one. Make sure that the chain three at the start never counted as a stitch. Finish it off just like the I've shown you before and then let's move on to round number two. Back to the diagram in round number two. We're going to just uh, slip, um, start on one of the double crochets. Chain up four which counts as your double crochet in chain one and then popcorn into the next. Chain one, double crochet into the next chain one popcorn in the next and so you'll end up with this configuration with six popcorns going all the way around. The popcorn is done exactly the same way and I also chose the same colors just for consistency of the look of this particular afghan. So let's start round number two just going into any one of the double crochets it's fine and you're just gonna slip stitch to pull through and then chain four. So one, two, three, that's your double crochet and the fourth one is your chain one. So you're gonna popcorn in the next a stitch available to you. So it's consisting of four double crochet and remember with the popcorn once you get your four in there just drop the loop and go to the first one pull through and then chain one and double crochet into the next one and you're gonna do that repeating all the way around. So chain one to start, chain one to start and then popcorn into the, the next I'm catching on my weaving tails. I'll probably leave this in the tutorial because a tutorial that doesn't have mistakes to me is uh, it's almost a joke in some way because you almost people feel like you're perfect in every way but the fact is is that we screw up like everybody else does. It depends how serious the mistake is. Now if I'm giving you wrong information or telling you wrong counts then yeah by all means that's when I can be in a lot of trouble. Okay so you got four, drop, go to the first one, pull through, chain one, double crochet into the next 
chain one and then popcorn in the next. So please do that all the way around. You should be able to count six uh, popcorns uh, going around and six double crochets standing on their own. So I'll see you at the end of this round. If your counts are right the very last stitch here will be a popcorn stitch. Do that, pull through, chain one and then join it to the third chain up on your beginning. So round number three that we're about to start is slightly different than round number three of the octagon and so this is what you can see at this point. So let's get rid of this yarn and let's go back to the diagram. Back to the diagram we go and we're gonna just join it to the top of the first chain three okay and then you're gonna uh, chain one or double and then single crochet. You can also do a standing single crochet it's up to you. So each one of these chain one spaces is gonna have two single crochets in it but this time in the popcorn you're also going to put one single crochet. If, if you remember from the original when we did this let's just pull this other diagram here. If you remember when we did this way back in the beginning is that when we did this we skipped over the um, the popcorns. This time we're not. We need every stitch to count in this case. So it's going to be one single crochet in each of the double crochets, two single crochets in this to the chain one spaces and one single crochet in each of the popcorns. Let's continue round number three and I also use round number three and four to be the same color. That's again your call. Let's begin round number three. Just join it to the top of the first chain three and if you go in and pull through and scoop it and keep two loops pull through the two that's a standing single crochet which counts. So in the chain one spaces just put in two single crochets and then put a single crochet in the top of the popcorn stitch. Okay and then go into the space for two more and then here's a double crochet so just apply one into the double crochet. So then two into the chain one space one into the popcorn, two into the next chain, one space and then one into the double crochet. So please do that all the way around. Um, I don't fasten off at the end of this one so it's your call what you would like to do with your colors. When you get all the way back around don't forget that chain one space before you finish. There's two single crochets there and then just join it to the beginning one and just hold. We're gonna go back to the diagram and let's uh, continue on to round number four. So in round number four we're now going to transition then to a square. We're going to chain up three and then double crochet into the same one that you have here and then there's gonna be one double crochet into the next, one half double crochet into the next one after that, four singles in a row and then one half, one double and then we're in the new corner. So just uh, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and we're gonna be doing that then all the way around. So you just gotta remember that there's one each of the big stuff. Um, so half or double crochet, half, four singles, half, double and then a corner. Let's continue then to round number four. So let's continue. We're gonna chain three. Counts as your first double crochet and in the same one you did the join apply another double crochet in there. So then here's our counts going across. We're gonna do one half, uh, one double crochet. We're gonna do one half and then we're gonna do four singles. So one, two, three and four. Then one half, one double and then the next one is a corner. So in the corners it will be two doubles chain two and two doubles and I'll just do one more side with you just make sure you got it. Okay so the next side is gonna be one double, one half, you got four singles so one, two, three and four and then one half, one, one double and the next corner is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So continue all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this round and we'll just verify you got it right and therefore see you can see it's going to square at this moment. When you get all the way around don't forget in the beginning one where you started you still have to do two double crochets into that same one to finish off that corner and then just chain two and then just slip stitch it to the top of the chain three and then that's the end of that revolution. So get rid of this yarn and we're gonna continue. The rest of the rounds are really quite easy to, to be able to maintain.
So this will be the last time looking at this diagram because the rest of the three rounds are simple. So we're just gonna do a single crochet, one into each and the corners will be one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. Do that all the way around for round number five. Number six, there will be starting in the chain space, uh, sing, a double, sorry, chain three counts as a double crochet, one double crochet, one double crochet in each and the corners will be two, chain two, two, do, two double crochet. And finally the last round will just simply be what you know with round number five and that seems to be pretty good. So you're gonna notice that it doesn't look completely square yet. That's it will square off as you're starting to continue the rest. So let's go into round number five and then we'll continue on. So number five we're just going to go into the chain two space and you could do a standing single if you want to. So just going in, pull through, pull through the two loops and that's a standing single. Just to only chain one and single crochet in the same one. Go right up over top of the straggler and just apply one single crochet into each of the stitches going across and then on the corners one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and you'll notice this will help pull it to be more square as well when you go to do this one. So I'll see you at the end of this round, round number five. Coming all the way around, this is the last stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch it to the first one. Let's get rid of this yarn. Let's move on to round number six and let's continue. Round number six is a double crochet round. Just start off, go into the chain one space on a corner and then chain, slip stitch it and then chain three. So one, two, three and then a double crochet into the same spot and then coming into the first stitch and going one double crochet into each and then corners don't forget is two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. So please do this all the way around. This is round number six. We got one more round to go and then you can uh, know how to do your squares at this point. There's only 12 of them in this design. Again if you would like to make it bigger or smaller that obviously will change the number of squares that you'll need and the number of, uh, amount of yarn you will require as well. So continue then to round six. When you get all the way around, don't forget the first corner that you started with. You gotta finish it. So you gotta put in two double crochet there and then chain two and then just slip stitch it to the top of the chain three. One more round to go folks and then we're gonna be done the square and then we're gonna move on to the triangle. Triangles are actually a lot quicker to make because there's only a half of a square but there is a trick to it and I'll show you that in just a bit. So let's do your final round. Final round is just one single crochet into each of the stitches. I went back to blue in this particular sample. Again colors are up to you. Just create a slip knot going into the corner. I'm doing a standing single chain one and then one more single in there and then just one single crochet into each stitch going around and then in the corners just one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. So this will conclude then the round number seven and I'll be back in just a moment just to finish off and then we'll talk about the triangle next. And finally when you come back around you're just going to slip stitch it to the first single crochet because you've already done that corner and what I need you to do is take care of your loose ends at this time then for the whole um, square so that you have a nice clean slate to work with. Um, on the last one here you might want to use your tapestry needle to hide that one in. So just grabbing your tapestry needle now and just finish it off. So if you go back and forth three times into the project you can see I have other tails to work through. Back and forth on the back side if you're one two and three. Then you should be good to go and it's nice and quick and easy so it's not a big deal and then any tails that you went over to get it in you should get those out too and then you have a nice clean slate. So we're gonna move on to the triangle next which is a half one of these and it's actually pretty simple uh, once you look at it from this perspective. When we look at the triangle it's actually half of one of these squares. The difference that I'm making this versus this is that when we think about doing this we're thinking about continuous rounds. We've been doing that throughout the whole motif so far. With the triangle we don't have the option of going all the way around. We always have to stop and then restart. So we have to start, stop, so we start and then we stop and then we, we fasten off and then we start and then we stop and then fasten off because if you go back and forth in this like rows what's gonna happen is that it will look upside down and this is consistent looking for going a continuous round and if I go back and forth in the rounds this will look wrong. So we want to continue that. So we have a diagram available for this and essentially it's just half and it's nice and easy and once you have this done then you're just gonna whip stitch it with a, um, a back loop there and you'll see that it's a nice continuous join on both sides.
So here's the crochet diagram that we're gonna have. We're gonna start off in the first uh, chain three doesn't count as anything and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the odd number was the trick to this in order to figure this out and then you can see that there's only six popcorns and you can see that we do what we have already done in the past and then continue to get ourselves to a square. So sorry I have a little bit of uh, indigestion today. So I'm just gonna work my way through. So the trick is is that you can see that we're always starting on this side. We always finish on this side. So when we get here we gotta fasten off, weave in the tails and then we start. So it's almost like a typewriter. So we uh, uh, go across, stop and then restart on the other side. So boom, boom, that's kind of the concept. Let's begin this triangle motif. Let's create a slip knot and let's begin. We're gonna chain three. This doesn't count as a stitch at all and we want to put in seven double crochets into the first chain. So one, two, three, four, Is five, six, and seven. That's it. So you wanna get rid of this now. You wanna fasten off and in the first one here you can probably fasten off and hide in the ends and get away with it. So just pulling it through and just weave it in and out some of these stitches that you have here and the next layer here will trap that underneath. The trick is here is to keep the right side facing up. So the side that you just were looking at keep that facing up and then you can get rid of any loose tails at this point as well. So let's move on to row number two. Let's begin row number two. Coming back to the very first side. So we finished here. So we're just going back and just grab it to the first double crochet that you have and then you did a chain four. So just a slip stitch at first and then chain four. So one, two, three, there's a double crochet and the fourth is a chain one space. And the next one here just bury up over the top of the loose ends. It'll save you time and you're gonna do a popcorn. So it's the same as what you already know, just four double crochets make it up. Okay, release it, let it go, pull through, chain one and double crochet into the next and then popcorn into the next one. So this is the middle of the triangle. Helps to know that kind of stuff once in a while. crochet in the next. There's only two stitches left. I can see that one and two. So chain one and then popcorn in the second last one. Pull through chain one and double crochet in the very final one. So you're gonna wanna get rid of this tail end now. Okay, so get rid of that. So you'll notice that, that we have, we're gonna have green coming up soon which is next and we want two rows of green so we're gonna have to still fasten off at the end of each one. It's kind of a pain but uh, it is what it is. So just weaving in your ends. If you can weave them in really good you don't have to worry about a tapestry needle but if you're not so good at it um, definitely do a tapestry needle for this. Let's move on then to row number three. Let's begin row number three. You're going to join it to the top of the chain three that you started with before. Just you can do um, a standing single if you'd like to and then in the next space you're going to apply two single crochets. So one and two and then one into the popcorn and then the, in the space between the popcorn and the next double crochet there's gonna be two and then in the double crochet there's only one. Okay so in the, so in the space between there's two, the popcorn there's one, 
the next space there's two, the double crochet there's one, the space that there's two, popcorn there's one and as you come to the other side here there remember there's a space there first so two singles and then one single into the last double crochet that you stopped with and then you wanna get rid of this yarn even though we're gonna use it again this color and fasten off. So let's continue you can see it's looking more of a bowl shape it will flatten out on, on its own in just a moment like you'll have a nice flat edge it'll be pretty close. So you're gonna come into the first single crochet that you started with before and you wanna join it and you're gonna just join and then chain three. So one, two, three and double crochet into that same one. In the next single crochet you wanna apply a double crochet. The next one is a half double crochet and then four singles in a row. One, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna get bigger so we're gonna go to a half double crochet for one, a double crochet for the next and this will be the official uh, point so you can see it's in the middle of the, the popcorn. So there's gonna be two double crochets first, chain two and two double crochet. So let's do the other side here. So there's gonna be one double crochet by itself, one half by itself, four singles in a row. So one, two, three, four. Then you want a total of one half, one double and then the very last one here you want two double crochets in there. And then that's it. So you see it's looking more better. So you're gonna just trim this off and let's move on to row number five. Let's move along to round number five, row number five I should say. So we're just gonna use the white and go to the top of the first chain three that we started with before. And we're gonna apply two double crochet or two singles in there. So let's just, you can join it with the standing. So this is the one and in the same one apply another single crochet in there. So it's just gonna be one single crochet in each of the stitches going across to the other side with the exception to the new corner that was formed and in the new corner it's one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. So um, Svetlana the designer actually helped me with this. Um, she said I was losing one count so she helped me just with the next uh, uh, row that we had in order to get the counts balanced so that it'll puzzle together better. So. You know sometimes you don't always know the answers and rely on people to help you out. So she was really awesome with that. So you're just doing one single crochet into each and so the very last stitch will have two single crochets in there to keep the balance and to keep it so that it will puzzle together beautifully. And so the very last stitch here there will be two. And then finish off. Let's start row number six. Just there's only seven rows complete. So let's just go to the first single crochet and just join it. So this is where Svetlana helped me out. So just join it and chain up three. And then double crochet in the same one. So she suggested in the next one I not just put one double crochet but I put in two. And actually it works out better when you go to puzzle it. So that was a great suggestion. So the first two have essentially two double crochets in it. So it's now gonna be one double crochet into each except for the corners. The corner, or sorry, the one corner that's only there and the corner will be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So this is round number six. And then the very final last two stitches on this one we'll have two double crochets into each and that will have better balance. So I think you know what you're doing at this moment so please do this. This is row number six. So I got to the end of row number six. See how it's flattened off? I, I haven't stretched it. It naturally wants to do it so sometimes you just gotta give it a bit of time and then the stitches will naturally wanna settle on its own. Let's do the final uh, row, row number seven. Row number seven I just used blue as I did before on the square. 
So going back to where I started there's gonna be two singles into the very first chain three that you had before. So you can do a standing single for one and then another single crochet for two. Then it's just one into each and then the corner will be one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and just keep in mind the very last stitch in this on this, uh, this side will be two single crochets in there and then you'll be good to go. And then I need you to weave in the ends and then do all your triangles for this particular case. And it, the triangles are only used on the on the ends and I never put any triangles in the very corners of this. I thought that the chamfer would look really quite nice and that's how the pattern for the border is written as well. So get this done and I'll see you at the end just for a quick recap and then we'll move on in today's tutorial. So I'm at the end just weave in your ends and then just get rid of everything that is uh, hanging out of your project and then have all your triangles ready to go. In the next part we're gonna start the assembly process and I'm gonna show you how to do the invisible join which gives a nice flat join and again anything at joining is completely optional on how you wanna do it and that's good to go. So let's uh, handle that next and let's go back to the diagram and let's show you the assembly part and then I'll show you how it's actually done and then you'll do that on your own and then we'll do the border. So here's what the afghan looks like in diagram format. Here's the real deal. So it's a nice easy way to be able to think about it. So the squares only go in the middle sections here and the triangles fill in the outside. So you need more triangles in order to fill it in. Again I left it off so that there was no triangle on the edge. I did that because the triangle would look opposite to what's already here and I didn't feel it would be um, really quite eye pleasing. So what I want you to do is that you're just gonna start off strategically. So you're just gonna start off with one squ uh, motif and just start joining in. So you're just gonna do a seam line here and then you're just gonna pick up what you can. So you're just gonna start off here. You'll pick up first part of this triangle and then you'll join this octagon and then this square and then this octagon and then the portion of this. So you wanna kinda of work strategically so that you have the less sewing um, strands needed in order to put it together. I also recommend to you that sometimes it's easy to get misorientated. So maybe just uh, clip them together with a stitch marker. Um, just like do like a full section. So I would do and work my way through one side like this and then work my way and grab the others and start working my way etc like that. That's how I would do it and build it outward. Um, it's a lot easier if you do that as well. So we're, I'm going to show you how to do the invisible join next and that will be continuing along today. As I begin to sew things I look at things on the afghan that can make my life a lot easier. So I just don't want a separate string for here, here and here. So what I'll try to do is that I get a long enough strand so that I can uh, just start sewing as I'm going along and I can just match up the pieces. So if you're uncomfortable with just trying to go with it without any stitch markers just grab a stitch marker and just clip it into place where you want it to go and then start. Now the trick to the doing this is that if you want an invisible join, an invisible join will allow you to have an invisible join pretty much even if the colors are opposite to each other. You wanna choose the color that is gonna blend the best. So on the original sample you can see that I used I think um, the burgundies as my color for joining on the original. So I just did something without telling you and I'll explain it in just a second. So I'm just feeding in the yarn into the needle. So the other side I create a slip knot. So you know how to do that. So let's zoom in and I'm gonna show you what I'm about to do. So I wanna capture the back loops of these particular motifs. So I would say I was gonna start over here but just for tutorial reasons and it's easier just to show you. So I wanna go in the back loop of the one and the back loop of the other. Okay, so I'm looking at the project so it's it's uh, right side facing up and I wanna just go in the back loop of each of these and I'm just grabbing the corners. Just the back loop only. If I grab the complete stitch it's gonna create a ridge. So I wanna pull through and as I'm pulling through if I hopefully don't drop my uh, needle off here is that I want to pull push this through that slip knot. And what that will do is it'll lock it and then pull it nice and tight. So then I move to the next available, the back loop only and then back loop on the next one and I'm gonna lay this straggler down on top so it gets stuck underneath the stitch. This is called whip stitching and by using the back loops you're creating a, an essentially a flat join. So I'm going to drag this 
particular starting strand here just about an inch or so before I'm gonna cut it off and just say it's done. So I'm pulling things nice and tight as I'm going. So now that I think it's in long enough I will take this now and I'll cut it out. So you can see it's really well hidden. So all I just have to do then is just continue to whip stitch and if things are not balancing out you can always just shift things. So for example see see if you see one side is, is going um, too quickly then what happens is say for example say this side was going too quickly I could just go into the same uh, to the next stitch here and then go into the same one where it is and then you can combine the two together. And it's really quite a hidden opportunity for you to try if you would like to do that. So you just wanna continue just to follow the seam lines. Um, sewing takes a little bit of time for sure um, but if you do it right you can see that it's a nice flat join and on the opposite side here you can see that it's flat on this side as well. So what you wanna do is that you wanna put everything together so that um, everything is matching. So in this case I would've just followed it around. So if I was doing it here I would then probably pull up um, if I was going along here I maybe want to do here and just go along the one side. Obviously you can't go both sides at the same time so you'll need a separate strand and just match everything and just pin things together if you have to in order to get things to work out and it actually will do a quite a nice job. So that's how I would whip stitch and now we're gonna move on to the border next. So I'm about to start the border on this thing and what I want to pay attention to the most is that where I'm starting. So I'm gonna start on a chamfer edge right here and work on my way out. So if you're following the written instructions that's where I've started and I'm following around like so. So what I have indicated to you is that you wanna keep the, uh, the sides equal to each other as far as the counts but you can always just fudge it if you have to. There's always ways to fudging things and I've noted that there's 23 stitches along the chamfer and I noted, this, I noted this center point here. So if you'll notice here that by the time I got to the center of this triangle here, so let me just show you there. So by the time I got to a center of the triangle that is listed right here there was 83 stitches so I equally spaced it out and then I did another 82 stitches then from that point then to here. And I wanted to pay attention to that because it will look um, you just wanna make sure that it looks right. So if you're off by one or two stitches it probably is not noticeable but if you're way off like 10 or 20 stitches too much on one side you'll see it for sure. So along the bottom here it's 165 uh, uh, stitches. That's the same measurement that you see here. I just did it so that it's easier for you to keep a count on. So what I want to do is that I'm just gonna show you how this is done and it's really quite an easy thing and it looks like it belong, uh, belongs as well. So let's move on to the border. So as we begin we want, I wanted to use the same color that I finished off the, the motifs with here. So I'm gonna use the blue and I'm gonna start in the upper corner. So we're going to do your corners. The corners will always be the same so I'm just gonna do a standing single crochet and then chain two and then I'm going to just single crochet in the same one. So I'm just going to apply one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and then on the next corner it'll be single crochet, chain two, single crochet and this is where the count is. So once you get over to here you wanna make sure you're equally spacing here. So it's 100, sorry it's 83 stitches to the middle of the, the middle triangle. So you wanna just go along use the stitches here and then just look and equally space it along this edge here and then you'll run into the next motif and then you'll run into the next middle triangle next. So you just wanna kinda equally space. Notice where you put it the first time and you wanna get your counts right at this moment because then you don't have to keep accounts for the remaining of the rows. So it's just essentially one single crochet in each of the stitches and just equally space it down as you're going um, along the sides when there is no stitch work to go into. So this is what we're going to do and just meet me back here in just a moment. So just one single crochet. For transparency I'm only just doing the, the corner section here. I'm not actually going all the way around. So once I get all the way to the end I'm just going to slip stitch. Okay and then I'm gonna get rid of that color. So just fasten off that color and then we're gonna begin something new and which will be a little bit easier for you to follow. So this is row uh, round number one. So th the first round will take you a little bit longer because you gotta count your stitches to make sure that you got the right counts and other than that it's not a big deal. So I'm going to move to another color and I can use any color that I want to. I'm just going to just use red just for the fun of it. And in red here what I want to do is that I want to create some spacing so that I can do my popcorns in the next stitch. 
So what I need to do is that I just need to just go into the corner and we're going to join with the standing single crochet and then chain one only and then one single crochet in the same one. So in this one here what I need to do is that I need to just go one stitch into each one of those all the way around. That's it. So in the corners will be one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and that's those chamfer corners that you are seeing. So it's gonna be awesome. So you're creating a kind of a foundation just very much like you see right here. So just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around and then maybe back here and uh, make sure you do your corners one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. I'll see you in just a moment. So just coming all the way back around again transparency I'm not going all the way around but you should be. And then all I'm just going to do at this point is just join it to the beginning single crochet. So that was round number two for the border. So we have three more rounds to do, rounds number three, four and five. So you're gonna get rid of that color and then we're gonna continue then into round number three. In round number three we're gonna create gapping spaces that you'll be able to notice and this is why the count mattered in the very first time that we went around. So get rid of this color and try something new. So let's move on to round number three. Starting in a corner I want you to just go right into the chain one space of a corner and we're going to join it. I can use a standing uh, single crochet there if I want to and chain one and one single crochet into there. So okay, so now you're gonna chain one, you're gonna skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. So this round will go pretty quickly and what you're doing is you're creating gapping spaces for the popcorns that will appear then in round number four which will be the final time you have to do popcorns for sure. So if your count is right, I'm not sure that it is for me because I haven't been really counting that strongly um, but when I get to the corner and I'll show you how to cheat it too if you have to. So if I'm gonna get to a corner I wanna make sure I'm creating these spaces. So chain one spaces, skipping one. So I'm looking at it here. So I can tell I'm off by one. So I told you I wasn't counting that strongly. So I'm just going to just put one in the last one and I'm still gonna chain one and treat my corner as normal. Okay, so there's always a way to cheat it if you have to but then start the row after that right. Okay, and just skip one, chain one, skip one and etc. and keep doing that all the way over. I know why I'm wrong here. I just eventually figured it out. I skipped over too many. So right here this is actually the second one. The first one was buried up underneath that one there. So this first one was technically there. So I'm, I've, I've shifted by one. So let's keep an eye on that if you want to do that. So I want you to continue to go around in the same fashion. This is row number three and then we'll start row number four which is a popcorn round once again. When you get all the way back around you're just going to slip stitch. Make sure you do a chain one first before you do that and then join it to the beginning. So let's start our popcorn round next and the popcorn is just a little round it will take a little bit of time to get to it. I felt it needed it to bring the popcorns kind of in balance with each other. Again your call, your creativity. Anything that you would like to change is completely up to you really. So I'm just gonna use another fun color. So the nice thing about the popcorn that I designed it in a way that it's easy to go in place. So the chain one spaces essentially have a popcorn. So we're gonna start with the popcorn first. Okay so you're just going to go right into a chain one space of a corner. Okay and then you're just going to chain up three. So one, two, three and then remember popcorns are made up of four double crochet. Okay once you get that done just go in the beginning one and pull it through and then chain one just like that and then what we want to do then is that we want to put in another popcorn into the same one. It's a corner so you need that extra turn. And then let it go and get the middle uh, first one. And then you what you need to do that at that point then is that you need to chain one. So you've got to chain one in between these. So chain one. So now that we've got the first corner done so you wanna go in each of these chain one spaces that you have and you want to apply a popcorn into each just like that. 
So it's a really easy round because all the chain one spaces are easy to find. And then the corner is what you wanna do is put two popcorns in just so that you can have it turn the corner even better. I'm just kinda rushing here a little bit. I think you can tell. So chain one and then going to the next chain one space and etc. So you'll have all these popcorns going all the way around. So then what you need to do then at the very end, the very ending is uh, the next row which I'll show you in just a moment but um, it works in between the spacing of these popcorns which is a nice easy way of doing it. So just popcorn all the way around. Remember corners are two popcorns with a chain one space in them just to let them turn. And then we'll be right back and we'll start the fifth and final round. So the fifth and final round works in the chain one spaces. So there's no uh, compensation for corners at all. So on corner spaces, don't worry about it. You're just using each of the chain one spaces in between each of these popcorns and it's the same thing. And it's my signature finish on how I like finishing my afghans. So just join it with the standing single crochet first and to get your first one done, chain three and then pico. So just going into the, the section there and pulling it through and through. It takes a bit of time to go around when you do this but it looks amazing. And then single crochet in the same one. So there's one pico. Go to the next chain one space. So single crochet first, chain three and then pico. See where I'm putting the hook? And pull it through and through and single crochet in the same one. So essentially there's two single crochets in each of these chain one spaces. So just single crochet, chain three, pico, it and then single crochet in the same one. So you're gonna go all the way around. Each chain one space will have this and you'll see that it will look beautifully finished by the time you finish this round. So this is the end of the Home for Christmas Crochet Afghan. Um, it's a really neat concept. I think hopefully that you've enjoyed it and it was a lot of fun to design this one here on behalf of our friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Have a great one and a very festive uh, holiday season to you or Merry Christmas if you prefer. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.